What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released watchOS 5.1.2 to the masses and with this update comes one of the most hyped Apple Watch features ever and that is ECG monitoring. So Apple introduced us to this concept at their September event this year before launching the Apple Watch Series 4 and most of us were hyped right from the get-go about this revolutionary feature. So before we get into the actual details and the demo of this ECG monitor in action, let's explain exactly what ECG is and how it's beneficial to your health. So ECG stands for electrocardiogram and it's basically a test that measures the electrical activity of the heartbeat. And basically how your heart works is that with each beat an electrical impulse also called a wave travels through your heart and this is how we can actually measure the heart rate and the heart rhythm. Now just to clarify the terms ECG and EKG both mean the same thing and are kind of interchangeable so don't get confused if I say EKG later on in this video and I say ECG now they both mean the exact same thing. Thing. So an ECG test can show you two important pieces of information about your heart. Number one, a doctor or you in this case can determine how long the electrical waves take to pass through the heart. And finding out how long a wave takes to travel from one part of the heart to the next shows if the electrical activity is normal, slow, fast or irregular. And the second important piece of information that an ECG can show you about your heart is that by measuring the amount of the electrical activity passing through the heart, a doctor, or again, you in this case, will be able to see if parts of the heart are too large or are overworked. So yeah, monitoring your heart is obviously very vital for your overall health and it's highly recommended. It's a highly recommended test the older you get. It can basically, you know, tell you early signs of AFib or other heart related issues and problems, and these could potentially save your life. So before we show this new feature off, on the Apple Watch. Let's discuss how to get this on your Apple Watch in the first place. So you can see right here, I have the software update on my iPhone 10s Max here. Watch OS 5.1.2, you can see it came in at 209 megabytes. So you will need to go ahead into the watch application on your iPhone and go ahead and update your Apple Watch to the latest software version. And keep in mind that this feature is exclusive to the Apple Watch Series 4, only the Series 4, and it is only working in the United States at this moment. Now you should also have your iPhone updated as well, just so you can see the health data. Uh, so you should be updated to iOS 12.1.1, which did get released yesterday. If you missed my video on that, I will have that up in the cards. And down in the description below. So anyways, after you've updated to watch OS 5.1.2, you will now have the application on your home screen of your Apple Watch. Let's go ahead over to that. So if we go to our home screen here and scroll over, we should see it. There it is right there. So you can see a heart rate monitor little icon. Go ahead and click on that. And then you see it gives you the prompt to set up ECG, open the health app on your iPhone. So it's looking like we will have to actually be updated to 12.1.1 on the iPhone for ECG to work. So let's go back to the iPhone real quick. All right, so there is the health application and you can see we are greeted with a brand new splash screen that says what's new in health and it shows all about the ECG application. So you can see there it says the ECG app records your heartbeat using the digital crown of your Apple Watch. The app then checks the recording for AFib, a form of irregular rhythm. So let's go ahead and click on set up and you can see right here set up the ECG application. So we have to put in our date of birth. All right, so once we put in our birth date it takes us to the next step. How does the ECG app work? So it gives you an explanation here of how the ECG app App works. Click on continue. And you can see right here it shows the results you may see sinus rhythm and AFib. You can see uh, lower high heart rates and inconclusive. So it shows you basically what to look for and how to be able to spot if you have AFib, uh, a low heart rate. You know, it shows you what to expect and how you can actually read the graphs after you run the test. So that's really cool that it shows you that it's very informative. So let's go ahead and click on continue. And then it says you should know it cannot detect a heart attack. It cannot detect blood clots or a stroke. It cannot detect other heart related conditions. And it makes sure to say that if you're not feeling well, you should talk to a doctor. And this is something that Apple stresses a lot. It's not saying that this is a complete replacement and that this is like the only ECG that you're ever going to need. It's basically just going to give you a general idea of how your heart is working. It's not going to replace, it's not going to be near as accurate as something in the hospital. I'll talk about that more in a second, but let's go ahead and click on continue. And then it says, take your first ECG. Recording an ECG typically takes 30 seconds and it shows exactly how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put my Apple Watch on. So you can see I have the application open here on my Apple Watch and it says to take an accurate ECG, your Apple Watch needs to be snug on the wrist, selected in settings. Currently that's on your left wrist. Let's go ahead and click on OK. And now it's going to have me put my finger, look at that really cool animation there, the heart, that is really cool. So it says, hold your finger on the crown. So I'm just going to put my right index finger on the crown. I'm not pressing, I'm just simply holding it there. So you can see it has a countdown now from 30 seconds. So you should probably try to be as still as possible. I know I am talking, so it's not going to be completely still. 
but you can kind of get an idea of my heart rate, my rhythm, and my overall heartbeat. You can see I'm at 105 beats per minute right there, but that's not really what we're looking at this for. You can use you know, other applications for that, but we're looking at the rhythm of my heart. So it's really interesting to be able to see that because it's monitoring that in real time as I have my finger here on the crown. So it says inconclusive. The ECG is inconclusive. It will still be saved. If you repeatedly get the result or you're not feeling well, you should talk to your doctor. So I don't know how I should feel about an inconclusive result here. Uh, I don't think that that's normal. So uh, that's not good. But anyway, it says not feeling well. You can actually add symptoms straight from the results screen, which is really cool. And by the way, right once we finish that, it showed the results here on my iPhone. And I will get to that in a second. I'm just still showing it here on the Apple Watch. So it's really cool that you can add symptoms here if you're not feeling well. And if we continue to scroll down, we have done. And it says you can view your ECG on the iPhone in the health application. Let's go and click on done. It takes us back to the animation. So now let's go back to our phone and see how the scan looks on the iPhone and the health application. So here you go, it says setup complete, this ECG is inconclusive, and then it shows the actual rhythm of my heart. So really interesting, it showed my average BPM was 106, and it says all of the ECGs you take will be stored in the health application. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this, and you can see it gives you a really detailed analysis of the ECG test. It shows all data, the sinus rhythm, uh, AFib, low and high heart rate, inconclusive. So basically it'll monitor, you know, if you can, as you continue to do this, how many times it it was you know each one of these so if it's inconclusive every time that may not be good if it's afib every time that's obviously not very good at all and so on so you can see you can also get back to those splash screens that we saw earlier by clicking on one of these and then if we go and click on this graph right here we can actually export this as a pdf for your doctor so really interesting really cool that you can do that and down here it also shows sample details so it shows exactly when you've run this test and it also shows the device details so it shows exactly which uh, device i was using the apple watch series 4 so I really like the fact that you can export this and send it to your doctor via PDF because obviously most people, unless you're in, you know, the medical field are not going to be able to read this graph, you know, like a doctor would. So I'm pretty curious about this inconclusive result. So I'm going to click on this I and it's actually going to be able to show me exactly what inconclusive means. So it tells me why it could have been inconclusive. And I think the, the main reason is because I was trying to talk and make this video, uh, you know, at the same time as doing this. So I'll have to do this again. Uh, maybe I'll do it here in a second, a second test just to see if I can get a real result where I'm not talking. But it's pretty cool that you can click on the I and see all the information about your exact result. So yeah, that is a demo of the ECG application application on the brand new Apple Watch Series 4 and Watch OS 5.1.2. I think it is an awesome, again, a revolutionary feature for Apple because this has never been put on a device before like this. I mean, this is something that you normally need to have a prescription for to be able to run a test like this. Now, of course, a lot of other tech companies are going to be putting this into their wearable devices like Fitbit, and I'm sure Samsung will as well. But Apple was first to this, which is awesome. And the fact that it integrates with the already awesome health application is just great. So before we head out, I just wanted to do one more test where I'm not actually talking and I can get a real result. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that real quick on my Apple Watch. All right, so there we go. That's what I like to see. So it shows sinus rhythm. This ECG does not show signs of AFib, which is awesome. So it looks like I check out normal after all. It was just because I was talking and everything like that earlier. Uh, I have a much lower BPM. You can see right there, 81 versus like 105 or 106 from before. And if you take a look at the graphs inside of the health application, you can see a big difference between the one I just did at the top and the one I did earlier, the inconclusive one where I was talking here at the bottom. So yeah, there you have it, guys. That is a quick demo of the ECG app application on the brand new Apple Watch Series 4 and Watch OS 5.1.2. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Definitely let me know down in the comment below if this is something that would possibly make you get an Apple Watch Series 4. I mean, this is not the only great health benefit that you get from the Apple Watch. This is just adding to the collection, you know, of, of really awesome ways to be able to just monitor your health with the Apple Watch. So anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe for a lot more iPhone and Apple Watch updates in the future. So thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you soon.